ready to watch the story which was considered by many to be the world's earliest surviving novel from Japan. Presented by group number 3 from BS at English 2B. The Tale of Genji by Murasaki Shikibu The story of Hikaru Genji's political rise, love affairs, and social rules is told in the tale of Genji. He is the son of a Japanese monarch named Emperor Kiritsibu and the emperor's low-ranking intimate courtesan and known as the Lady Kiritsibu. He also known as Shining Genji in his youth. He is admired for his beauty, grace, and inexplicable qualities. Even though Genji is born to a low-status concubine with no political growth, the Emperor His Majesty loves the mother Lady Kiritsibu and her new song so much that, when Genji gets older, his brilliance and physical attractiveness convince his strong father to declare him as an official commoner with the surname Minamoto. As a commoner, Genji may live more freely and be closer to his adored father than if he were a member of royalty, where he might suffer as a leader and simply garner criticism from his mother's law position. Lady Kiritsubu died when Genji was 3 years old because she was hounded to death very early on by her betters. The emperor was not shaken despite the resentment of the court of being the lower status of his wife. Furthermore, Kokiden consort wants to be an empress but it was taken possession of by Lady Kiritsubo. But then, Kokiden consort has had a son, Zuzaku. He is earlier born than Genji. Because of this, Zuzaku has the right to be heir of the throne and now Kokiden is especially disgusted with Genji's magnetic appearance and personality. Kiritsubo reflects Fujitsubo to the eyes of the emperor and is thrilled to bring her into the palace and become an empress in it because of her high-ranking background. During Genji's adolescence, he was married to a 16 years old woman named Aoi, the daughter of the left minister. Fujitsubo takes care of Genji like her son, so it her stepson to the emperor. However, in his adolescence, Genji fell in love with Fujitsubo despite of being married to Aoi. When Genji was 18 and had a fever, he visited the rural area of Kitayama for treatment. There, he found a 10 years old young lady named Murasaki. He is the likeness of her father's concubine, Fujitsubo, and her mother. He takes Murasaki away against Murasaki's guardian and raises her as a future wife. Meanwhile, he was having an affair with her stepmother, Lady Fujitsubo. Despite being married to the emperor, Genji's love for Lady Fujitsubo has borne fruit. Reizei eventually becomes emperor. They both hide the truth and convince the emperor that Reizei was the son of the emperor. Genji and his wife Aoi somewhat reconciled but she died after giving birth to Yugiri, the second son of Genji, where everyone believes that Yugiri was his first son but it was not. Her death is associated with the living phantom of Genji's lovers. The jealousy of the spirit of Rokujo Haven. Genji's father, the emperor, died and his stepbrother, Suzaku, the son of Lady Kokiden, win the throne. Due to Genji's ongoing romance, the death of the emperor or his father, and the big changes of the rule under the new emperor, which is his brother, Suzaku, Genji's actions started to consider some consequences. One of the many secrets of Genji was having an affair with one of the new emperor's mistresses, the mistress named Oborozikiyo. 
but the new emperor is not offended personally but Genji knows that this might be a reason for him to get exiled. So, he is deported to an isolated rural area in Suma. While Genji is in Suma, he meets a wealthy man known as Akashi Novise. Genji start to court Akashi's daughter and she become Genji's one of the concubines. Later, she gives birth to Genji's first daughter, the third child of Genji and it is called a baby Akashi. Genji's daughter will become empress and his other two sons will become emperor. His son with Fujitsubo, Reizei, and his son with Aoi, Yugiri, which might become a higher rank nobility as foreseen by an astrologer. While Genji stays in Zuma, several unfortunate events have happened. The new emperor began to have some strange dreams. That is his father Kokiden consort and he also had a dream about the failing health of his mother Kokiden. Genji thinks that he will be welcome when he gets back to Kyoto again. Genji has been raised in higher political status. Rokujo Haven, one of Genji's lovers, Rokujo entrusted her daughter Akikonomu to Genji. Before Rokujo died, Genji promised that he will raise Akikonomu with the best intentions and he will never look at her as a lover. Genji is considering isolating himself again but his desire to raise his children and other young people in his life is one of his reasons to not live yet. Genji encourages Lady Akashi to come up to the capital but she is concerned about her social standing. Rice Akashi also persuades her to go up to the capital, and at last, she secretly moves to the second residence of Genji located near the Katsuragawa River, where Genji welcomes her and meets his own daughter. When Lady Murasaki hears about her from Genji, she feels jealous of Lady Akashi because she doesn't have a child, but she is pleased to know that Genji's plan to adopt the baby girl for her in the future. As Lady Akashi's daughter is taken in by Genji, Lady Akashi experiences a sad separation from her daughter at the second house in Oi. The following spring, Fujitsubo passes away, and Genji feels the extremely sorrowful. On the other hand, Emperor Reizei accidentally finds out that his real father is Genji and tries to have his father succeed to the throne, but Genji admonishes him for it, keeping the secret. Genji's cousin Asagao, about whom he had felt deeply once resigns, because Asagao is well known for her beauty and attractiveness, Lady Murasaki can have feeling uneasy, while Asagao keeps turning down Genji's marriage proposals. Genji tells Lady Murasaki about the women he had relations with, and on that night, he has a dream in which Fujitsubo appears, blaming him over her sin being revealed. Yugiri, Genji's son by Aoi, celebrates his coming of age. For various reasons, Genji makes his son study at the academy, but Yugiri is ashamed of this because it is not what the children of distinguished families do. Yugiri has a girlfriend from his childhood called Kumoi no Kari, a daughter of the former Tonochoju, the palace minister. But the father becomes Genji's political enemy and forces the two of them apart, which makes Yugiri even more depressed. Two years later, Genji's residence, known as Sorokoju State, is completed. The resident is separated into four wings, each of which is named after four seasons. In the spring wing, there lives Lady Morsaki. The summer wing, Hanachi Rusato and other women. The autumn wing is for the ice consort short leaves from service. Because of this, she is called Akikonomu, which literally means preferring autumn. And in the winter wing, Lady Akashi. At the end of this chapter, 
Lady Morsaki and Empress Akinom Akinomu exchange poems of springs and autumn. Yugo and Tamakazura, a daughter of Tonechujo, comes to be taken in by Genji and live in the Rokoji state through an act of fate. Hikaru Genji, Hotaru Yobukyo no Miya, Genji's younger brother, and Kashiwagi, Genji's older brother by a different mother, propose to her. But the most inelegant man, Higekuro, the commander of the right, forces her to get married with him in the end. The Ten Queries of Tamakazura consists of short chapters which deal with the story around her, beginning with Hatsune, the first warbler, and ending with Miyuki, the imperial process, in which a year in the Rokoji state is elegantly depicted, focusing on elegance rather than the plot itself. Tamakazura is taken to the Zaifu by her wet nurse and grows up to be a beautiful lady. The wet nurse wants Tamakazura's father to meet her, so they pay a visit to the Hatsuse shrine where they meet Okon, who was a former court lady of Yugao and serves Genji now, and Genji comes to adopt Tamakazura. The New Year has come and elegant New Year celebrations at the Rokoji state are depicted. Young courtiers who pay a New Year's visit to Genji's residence feel distracted because of Tamakazura. In March, when Empress Akikonomo takes a short leave, the people in the Rokoji state enjoy boating and after that various events are held, Tamakazura is so attractive that even Genji confesses his love for her jokingly. Being depressed, Tamakazura doesn't enjoy herself at all. But Genji amuses himself by making fun of the young courtiers who love her. When his younger brother, Yobokyo no Miya, visits her, Genji lets fireflies out inside of the bamboo blind, showing her beauty to him. Around the time when the early summer winds keep falling, illustrated stories become popular at the Rokoji state, so Genji and Tamakazura debate about their tales. One summer day, Genji invites Yugiri and other courtiers and ridicules the bad taste and inelegance of Omi no Kimi, a daughter newly discovered by the palace minister. And after he visits Ta Tamagazura's place, where pinks, tokonatsu are blooming in righteous profusion. One early autumn night, Genji teaches Tamagazura how to play koto the Japanese traditional zither, and lies down beside her, making a fire in an iron basket in the garden. However, they don't enter into a sexual relationship. On the next morning after the typhoon, Yugiri visits Genji's wife and mistresses at the Rokoji state where he sees Lady Morsaki by chance and becomes attracted to her. He also sees his father flirting with Tamakazura and grows suspicious. In celebration of Hikaru's Genji's 40th birthday, Tamakazura sends him spring shoots on New Year's Day. Meanwhile, Emperor Suzaku is to retire into the prison, but he is worried about his younger daughter, Ona Sanomiya, and so asks Genji to marry her. Lady Murasaki is deeply concerned with this, and while Genji himself can feel affection for the third princess because she is mere child, he also can turn down his older brother and the emperor's offer. In autumn, Genji's 40th birthday ceremony is carried out with great splendor. The following spring, young lady Akashi spears the crown prince Chao, increasing Genji's influence. While Kashiwagi catches a glimpse of Onasano Mia when Kimari is playing and falls in love with her secretly. Between the first and second volumes of Wakana, there is a blank of seven years during the time Emperor Reisi advocates the throne and Emperor Kenji succeeds his father. Lady Akashi's son becomes the crown prince. 
At Emperor Susago's 50th Jubilee, a music concert performed by women is to be held, and Genji teaches on a Sanomiya to Koto. Right after the music concert, Lady Murasaki is sick in bed, and Genji BCS himself in taking care of her. During this time, Kashiwagi realizes his desire, getting on a Sanomiya pregnant. Genji discovered this through a letter Kashiwagi has sent on Tono Sanomiya, agonizes over it. However, Kashiwagi gets ill because of Genji's indirect admonition and falls into critical condition. Early in the new year, Ona Sanomiya gives birth to a baby boy named Kauru, while Kashiwagi, who was in critical condition, passes away. Ona Sanomiya is also rocked by Gyo and doing badly after birth, becomes a priestess. Genji decides to keep private the details concerning the circumstances of Karu's birth. However, Kashiwagi has asked Yugori, his best friend, to talk after his family after he dies. And while Yugori visits Kashiwagi's wife, Nino Mia, the second princess, Ochiba no Mia, he becomes to be attracted to her. Autumn marks the first anniversary of Kashiwagi's death. Ochiba no Miya's mother sent Yugori a yukube, a flute, treasured by the late Kashiwagi in reward for his support of her daughter Ochiba no Miya. But that night Kashiwagi appeared in Yugori's dream, saying that it was a different person, to whom he wanted to send the yukube. Yugori consults with Genji about this, but Genji avoids telling him what to do. In summer, a ceremony devoted priestess on Sanomiya's newly made Buddhist image is held. In autumn, Genji has well cricket released in the Garden of State and hold a feast. At night, Empress Akiko Nomo confesses to Genji that he wants to become a priestess to console the spirit of her mother Ruku, whose spirit is still in agony even after death while Genji persuades her not to do so. In autumn, Yugori, who can help hiding his love for Ochiba no Miya anymore, confesses his feeling for her, but she doesn't accept him. However, there is a rumor about these two people and Ochiba no Miya's mother is so worried about this such succumbs to illness and passes away. Ochiba no Miya grows increasingly worthy of Yugiri, but he forces her to have a relationship with him. Komoi no Kari is a jealous that she goes back to her father, the resigned Grand Minister Hong. And won't listen to Yugiri's excuse. At the end of this chapter, Yugiri's future and his family's prosperity are told. After Lady Murasaki has fallen seriously ill in the chapter of Bakana, she often asks Genji to let her become a priestess, but she won't approve it. So all she can do is to pray for happiness in the next world by performing a Buddhist service. The last glorious days of the Rukuho state from spring to autumn and Lady Murasaki's state of disease is defeated. In autumn, Lady Murasaki passes away because of disease, and Genji grieves deeply over her. After the death of Lady Murasaki, a whole year of Genji's life is lyrically depicted focusing on scenes and manners of the four seasons. At the end of the year, Genji decides firmly to retire into the priesthood, burning letter from the former lover. This chapter is blank. It has been said from long time ago that this chapter evokes Genji's death. Besides, in the chapter of Yadorigi, the Ivy, the author wrote that several years after Genji had become a priest, he lived in seclusion at Saga, Kyoto City, and passes away. The tale begins with a sense 
several years after Hikari's Genji's death. The prosperity among the Genji's family tribes, centering around the children of young Lady Akashi and Emperor Kinho. Empress Akashi's son, San Nomiya, is particularly well known for his amoroneness and popular with people along with Kauru. He is called Kauru because he gives off a natural sweet scent from his body, while Numiya suffuses his clothes with the fragrance of fine incense, which will be called Neomiya. This is the tale of Chonuchuwo family after the death of Kashiwagi, a marriage between Nuomiya and Chaka no Kimi, a granddaughter of his Zain Grand Minister, Tonichuwo is being arranged but he is attracted to both Lady Makibashira and daughter of Hotaru Hobukyo no Miya and takes notice of Naka no Kimi. This chapter was probably forged for prosperity. This chapter deals with the late of the family of Higekuro after his died. Oigami, one of the two daughters of Tamakazura, gets married to Emperor Reizi, while Naka no Kimi, the other daughter, is to enter into service at the emperor court. Yuguri is loved by his family and has a close relationship with them. This chapter was probably forged for prosperity. This is a love story among the three sisters, Uji Haji no Miya, Kaoru, an illegitimate child between Kashiwagi and Ono Sano Miya and Nuo Miya. Hikaru Genji's Grandchild These chapters are dominated by a strong influence of Buddhism and a sense of uncertainty. And the characters of the Kaoru is irresolute and can take the initiative in love, which makes a strong contrast with his rival Nuo Miya. And Genji in the first and the second sections. Kaoru's personality had a strong influence on the tales of both the Heian and Kamokara periods later. Genji's younger brother Hachi no Miya lives in seclusion with his two daughters at Yuji, spending his days in Buddhist training. Kaoru being burdened by the secrets concerning his birth regards Haji no Miya's ways of living as ideal, and often visits his residence, coming to feel deeply attracted to Ojimi, his eldest daughter, returning to the capital. Kaoru tells Nuo Miya what is going on in Uji, and Nuo Miya also gets interested in his story. Niyomiya stops at Yuji in spring and exchanges poems with Naka no Kimi. Hachi no Miya passes away in autumn. Two daughters are left in Karu's hand. Karu tries to arrange a marriage between Naka no Kimi and Niyomiya while he himself confesses his love for Oigimi but is surfused. However, Karu loves her more than ever. Karu tells his love for Oigimi again in vain, while Oigimi hopes that Nakanokimi and Kaoru will get married. At the end of the autumn, Oigimi leaves Nakanokimi and Kaoru alone in a bedroom, but Kaoru won't touch her. According to plan, he arranges a marriage between Niyomiya and Naka no Kimi. But Niyomiya doesn't often visit his wife, and the bitter Oigimi falls sick in bed, soon passing away in Kaoru's arm. The following year, the period of mourning for Oigimi ended, and Nakanokimi is taken in by Niyomiya. Although Karu serves her 
as a guardian, he ends up being distrusted by Neo Mia. Neo Mia gets married to Roko no Kimi, Yugiri's sixth daughter. And Naka no Kimi, who is pregnant, cannot help feeling anxious about the future. While Kaoru consoles Naka no Kimi, he comes to feel affection toward her, which makes her confused. But after she safely give birth to a baby boy, her position becomes more stable. Although Kaoru gets married with Onani no Miya, Emperor's Kinjo's princess, his sorrow cannot be suited. However, he visits the Hasidera temple. He catches a glimpse of Ukifune, Oigimi's half younger sister by different mother, and is moved by her. Because of her mother's second marriage, Ukefune has been brought up as a stepdaughter of the country governor. And many men want to marry her because of her father's property. However, her mother hopes to make her marry a nobleman, leaving her with Naka no Kimi. The mother wants to arrange a marriage between Kaoru and her daughter. But one night, Niyomiya pours her into a relationship with him. So she takes in Okifune Hasli, consulting with Kaoru later. Niyomiya, who still cannot give up his attachment to Okifune discovers her residence through a letter from Naka no Kimi and visits Yuji pretending that Kaoru had an affair with Ukifune possibly. Before long, Ukifune also comes to love Mia, while Kaoru, who knows nothing about them, begins preparation for having her to move to Kyo. So Niyomiya enters into a rivalry with him, planning to take her to his residence. As a consequence, Kaoru, who knows about the relationship between Niyomiya and Okifune, is sent a poem that blames her and she agonizes over these two men. Okifune is lost, and remaining court ladies sense that she must have drawn herself, so they hold a funeral to hide the truth, lamenting over her death. Kaoru also knows this, and grieves over her death deeply. When summer comes, Kaoru feels affection toward Ona Ichinomiya, an older sister of his wife. Actually, Okifune is not dead and is helped by Yokawa no Sozu, the prelate of Yokawa. Before long, she recovers and without revealing her name, tells the Sozu that she would like to become a priestess because young lady Akashi's priest for incantation tells her about Okifune. Kaoru also comes to know about her. Kaoru goes to Yukawa and asks Sozu to meet Okifune to no avail. So he hands Okifune's younger brother Kogimi a letter asking her to return to the secular life. However, Okifune refuses everything and thinks about nothing but Buddhist training and doesn't even reply to him. Karu leaves, Yukawa is still loving Okefune. And that is the ending of the novel entitles The Tale of Genji. Thank you for watching and listening.